Hi everyone and welcome to a commentary playthrough of Final Fantasy X, the HD Remastered Edition by yours truly, Dan's Great. And I am seriously excited to do this playthrough. I have been waiting, well let's just say this has been about six years in the making. And this game holds a very special place in my heart. Firstly because at the end of the day it's my favourite game, full stop, so I don't really need to say any more. And um, other than that it's actually the reason why I created this channel in the first place back in uh, I think it was May 2008. The name Dansgo8 is actually an acronym for something related to this game and I'll explain a bit more about that as I as I end up playing through. Those of you that kind of watch my uh, hangout type stuff will already know what the name's about but some of you might be new to it so hopefully I'll explain what's going to happen. So I have always wanted to do a commentary playthrough of this game and there is no better excuse than now. So we have the HD remaster and I'm seriously looking forward to this. And why should you watch this playthrough, maybe instead of some of the others? Well, first of all, um, the kind of commentary that I do is um, I try to be as kind of non-intrusive as possible. I keep, you know, the cutscenes, I'm, I'm silent through the cutscenes, I let the, you know, the game tell its story without interfering and that kind of stuff. And I am, well, since it's my favourite game, I have spent a lot of time playing this game. And I think for about the first two years of, uh, you know, the time that I had on this channel, it was exclusively Final Fantasy X content that I used to upload. So if you scroll back to some of my oldest videos, you can uh, check some of my old Final Fantasy X videos in all of their, you know, potato recorded quality. So feel free to enjoy those if you if you so wish. But I definitely know what I'm doing with this game. Trust me when I say this. And I don't mean that in terms of I know where every single small item is. I just mean in terms of, you know, the game mechanics and just general all-round know-how of the, the story in the game. So you guys should be in safe hands. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is going to be such a long playthrough and longer than anything else I've ever done. So there's probably going to be plenty of opportunity to, to say what I want to say about this game. So let's get straight into it with the, the standard sphere grid because, you know, there might be first time players and they might want to see how the standard sphere grid works. Um, just to add to this, the, the first episode will be an hour just because there is so much cutscene in the beginning. There's not really too much chance to play, so the first uh, episode will be an hour long. And from there on, I'll probably stick to episodes between 20 and 30 minutes. Listen to my story. This may be our last chance.
All right, here we go. We are in control, and it's not going to last very long because we have to do a few little things first. But we are in a place called Zanakand, which is one of my favourite kind of locations in all of games. I mean, it's uh, unfortunately you don't really get to explore it, but just in terms of the general look, I just I, I do love the look of this place. Uh, let me lay down a few little ground rules before I actually get into you know some more cutscenes and more of the intro. Um, my intention is to eventually do everything there is to do for this game and by that I mean basically trying to get the, the Platinum Trophy. So that will include everything including the, the Dark Aeons and the side quests and that kind of stuff. But if you guys have watched my playthroughs before you'll know that I'm always focused on the story first. So what I will do is do a more kind of uh, straightforward kind of run to the finish. And once I reach the final boss then uh, I will defeat the final boss and then from there I will do the, I will do the side quest from there. So that means that we won't get too bogged down with side quest type stuff. And the only real collectibles that I'm going to be concentrating on on the initial kind of playthrough to the finish is going to be the Albed Primers. So you will find the location of all 26 Albed Primers as I make my way through the game. But other than that, there's not too much that I'll be concentrating on. I'll just be enjoying myself and uh, just trying to get to the finish before I really get stuck into you know um, you know power leveling and side quests and optional bosses and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, I think that should be it for now. Let's get into it. No prop. Okay, so my man's a bit of a celebrity, and here we're going to come to one of the first gripes that you might have with this playthrough. I call this guy Titus. Now, obviously, those of you those of you guys who know about this game, or that you know speak American English, you will call this guy Titus. And from what the developers have said, that is the correct name for this guy. But at the end of the day, I first played this game when I was like 13, and for the first five or six years of having it, I had no idea that he was actually called Titus. So obviously when you get used to calling a guy Titus for six years, it's difficult to change it. So if I started calling him Titus now, I'd probably revert back to it at some point. So you'll have to forgive me for that one, but he shall be called Titus. But I mean, his name is never said in the game anyway. So it's an interesting option that they get to, that you get to name the character, whatever you like. I guess they tried to maybe do that. So you try to, you know, put yourself in his shoes as much as possible and make it a more, make him a little bit more kind of personal to you. But obviously, we're going to keep it as tight as. Please! Alrighty. Me too! <laughs> Take it easy. Let's talk to these girlies. Can I have your autograph? Of course. Good luck tonight! Nothing to worry about. Oh, if I score a goal, I'll, uh, do this. That will mean it was for you, okay? <laughs> what seat? He's blocking the front row! Fits from the right! Got it. Well, gotta go. Cheer for me. Two? Three? Teach us how to blitz! Hey, I, I got a game to play. Then teach us after. Maybe tonight? Um, you know, you can't tonight. I mean, tomorrow. Promise? Promise. I was in a coffee shop running away from home when I heard the news. Our hero, checked, gone, vanished into thin air. <laughs> My dad must have been his biggest fan. 
I knew how sad he'd be. Heck, we all were that day. Zanar, I says to myself, what are you thinking? I went running straight back home. We sat up talking about Jack all night. My dad and I never talked so much. Whoa, didn't mean to reminisce, folks. Anyway, 10 years later, the Jack Memorial Cup tournament is today. The two teams that have won through to the finals are, of course, the Abes from A East and the Duggles from C South. I know there's a lot of people out there today to see the star of the Abes. In just one year, he's become the team's number one player. He's Jack's blood and the new hope of Blitzball. What kind of super play will he show us today? Will we see his father's legendary shot? I don't think I'm the only one excited here, folks. Okay, so the reason that I didn't, I kind of ran around in circles was because if I get to the end of this area, you end up cutting off what the commentator has to say. And uh, to be honest, I think if I've done 20 playthroughs, I've probably cut him off every single time. But um, he does say something important, which is that this uh, this guy, Titus, is the son of a very famous Blitzball player. And so he seems to have his father's talent as well, and seems to be a star blitzer. Obviously, I've played the game so many times, but I will do my best to, to not give any spoilers. And I'll try to explain the plot as we go along, in case people aren't understanding. Make way, make way! Coming through, sorry. Hey, I'm gonna be late. Hey, let go of me.
are you talking about? It begins. What? Don't cry. Don't matter. We cut through. Okay. Obviously, this is a turn-based game, so not like the, the more recent Final Fantasies that you have been seeing. And because this was the first Final Fantasy I played, obviously I got used to this system, so it's always taken me a while to adapt to the newer Final Fantasies. And I'm still not sure if it's what I like. But that being said, uh, Final Fantasy 13, 3, Lightning Returns, I, I did enjoy the battle system for that. I ain't gonna lie. But obviously very easy stuff at the moment. These are the first enemies. Don't bother going after all of them. Cut the ones that matter and run. Well, thank God Oren had a sword ready for, for Titus because... Otherwise, it was going to be quite problematic. You saw his uh, his combat skills. He's not like Snow from Final Fantasy XIII. He's not very good with his hands. So you know, he seems like a pretty um, you know, pampered sports star. He doesn't seem to know what he's doing around monsters. Unlike our friend Oren here, who's just kicking the shit out of them. Some 
Okay, so here we get to see the player's special moves. And Auron is going to set things off with a pretty badass move right here. Because, you know, he is the badass of the game. Okay, so this first uh, this first boss battle is called Sinspawn Amnes, I think, something like that. And the good news is that this guy can't kill you because he has an attack called Demi, and all that does is um, is gravity-based damage. So it's going to take 25% of your of your current health. So you're in no danger at all. Don't even need to heal. So yeah, the beautiful city of Zanakand is under attack from a giant floating ball that's firing out missiles and sucking up stuff. And it's going to take a while before we, we fully understand what Sin is, and, you know, even until we see its full you know, appearance. So if you're, if you're confused by the whole Sin stuff, if it's your first time experiencing the story, just bear with it. At the end of the day, I think you know, the game is trying to put you in the shoes of Titus, so Titus doesn't know what's going on, you're not really supposed to know what's going on either. So just bear with it, and hopefully the story will make more sense to you as it goes along and I will do my best to kind of reinforce the plot as we move forward. Wow, a lot of critical hits early on. Another one. Wow. If I was speed running this would be amazing. Right, let's move on. And we have Save Sphere. Yep, very useful. Especially when you want to be like, you know, doing a bit of extra leveling up around areas. Obviously, if you hang around near a Save Sphere, then you get to replenish your health without having to use, you know, items and healing and all that kind of stuff. What are you laughing at, old man? Lauren, let's get out of here! We're expected. Huh? Give me a break, man! Okay, what I will say is this, there are times in the game where you will have certain battles that will enable you to um, you know, learn stuff that you probably wouldn't be able to learn this early in the game if you were doing a regular playthrough and you know you didn't know that this kind of thing existed. And so what I'm going to be doing for the story playthrough, I'm not going to be doing any kind of you know, um, power leveling or anything like that. So I'm going to try and keep my stats you know, fairly low and not do any excess, excess battles. And hopefully that should keep the the boss battles a little bit more interesting because obviously if I if I take the opportunity to you know do a bit of power leveling in some locations then everything's going to become way too easy. So that will be said. So you know things like uh, those of you guys that know know the game. There's overdrive modes and hmm. this could be bad. That knock it down. What? Trust me, you'll see. Yeah, there's things like overdrive modes and uh, whatever, so that kind of stuff will all come later. This is just, uh, imagine it like a first time playthrough. But yeah, obviously these guys are not too much of a threat, unless they all decide to attack Titus for whatever reason. But you are very, very unlikely to die here. And once we set this thing off, it should be quite a bit of cutscene.
this is it. This is your story. It all begins here. Hey! Hey! My old man? Hmm. Okay, so we got sucked into Sim's butthole. And we find ourselves floating inside, to be honest, what looks like Xanakand. Has it sucked the whole of Xanakand inside itself? And we're floating around in there? What I will say is this, those of you guys that have played this game before and know the story, I would pay attention to the little clues that the game gives you throughout the game about you know information that gets revealed later on and just see how the story builds up towards uh, those moments because there are some really interesting things foreshadowing let's say I thought about a lot of things like where I was what I got myself into I started to feel lightheaded and then sleepy I think I had a dream. A dream of being alone. I wanted someone, anyone, beside me. So I didn't have to feel alone anymore. Anybody there? Aaron! Hey! All right, welcome to Baj Temple. And it's interesting, we will be visiting this place uh, once the main game is over. So that should be uh, that should be interesting, and obviously I won't reveal why we'll be revisiting this place, but as part of a side quest, we're going to have to do some, some stuff here as well. But it's, uh, it's interesting, he's been, this, he looks like he's been taken somewhere pretty far away. This does not look anything like Xanakant. Okay, so we have some undecipherable stuff here written in a code. Well, well, not really a code, it's a different language, but it's based on a code. What do we have here? No, nope, can't read it. And there is a race of people that uses a language called Albed, and what we can do in this game is pick up primers that will help us to decipher their language and understand what those people are talking about. But it pretty much takes you until the end of the game to be able to, to grab them all. So just like Tidus can't understand our bed, uh, you won't be able to either for the first playthrough. Which kind of makes sense, again, putting you in Tidus's position. But I mean, most of the important stuff, obviously, they reiterate anyway, so it's not a big deal. Those of you that have played the game will already know these spheres here. They're to, uh, if you already have a save where you've picked up all of the primers, you can use this thing to load your primers from a different save. So you can play through the game from the beginning knowing our bed already. So that's pretty useful. Um, let's have a look at the config. I don't remember names being available in the original. And we did not have the option to switch the map off. Now this was uh, for the movie version that I, that I did. This was fantastic. Obviously being able to enjoy the whole kind of screen without having that impeding it was nice. And as you can see, I think for me personally the, the greatest triumph of the, the HD remaster has been the environments. You know, I think the 
the water, the, the stonework, everything. It really does look nice. The the characters are a little bit more debatable, but environments for certain they have undergone a big upgrade and look really nice. I'm pretty much going to save every every opportunity I get just in case something happens, but it's unlikely. But yeah, um, from what I know, the character models, the the main ones anyway, they were they were done from scratch. So that's why Tidus kind of he looks a little bit different from his, um, you know, it's not just an enhancement. He does look slightly different, and I'm not sure if he was actually one of the better ones from the HD remaster. Obviously, from this distance, it's not a problem, but the um, not the FMVs, but the other cutscenes. I'm not too too sure about that. But some of the characters look really good, like Oren, for example. I think they've done a good job. some Eye of the Tiger shit going on there. He looks confident with that sword already. He's a, he's a quick learner. Again, no threat posed by these guys. Okay, this guy is pretty big and it, he looks a little bit too tough for, for Tylus to handle at the moment. And that is exactly the truth. This guy's attack, again, it takes half of your current HP, so he will not kill you. But you won't be able to kill it either, so don't waste your overdrive if you have one here, thinking that you'll be able to kill it. I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce his name, because. Yeah. There you go. It's a weird hybrid of loads of different types of creatures as well. Very original creation. I do love that shot where he's about to swallow Titus and uh, he gets saved by the doorway. I had made it out of the frying pan and into the freezer. I thought I was going to die in this place. Yep, more retrospective narration. 
What well, I can say about the boss that we uh, faced a minute ago, you will be able to come back and defeat it later on in the game if you so desire, but it is optional. Alright, let's do that. It's a very solitary beginning to this game. Now that I've said that, I'm probably not going to save it every single one now. Sometimes they are a little bit too close to each other. Uh, we need to find some flint and we need to find uh, the withered bouquet. There we go, that's one half of the fire making ingredients. I think there's a treasure chest here that I always miss. Um, I will probably miss some treasure chests, it's uh, it's highly likely that that will happen, but I will do my best to, to find them all. That's the way I came in. It should be... There, there you go, it's around there. That's the one. Yeah, I've missed that one on more than one occasion before. And the X potion is a pretty pretty cool thing. Fully restores HP, so it's nice to have. Obviously in the early stages when your HP is like pretty low, it's not gonna be that useful, but later, you never know. And there is the withered bouquet. Lovely. Should be one more treasure chest here, and then we're ready to get the fire going and continue the story. Always get, always get stuck here. There we go. Plenty of potions already. Can never have too many. I do like this um, this track as well. It's a nice atmospheric one. Need food. What do, what do you, you want? want? It was a bad call. Your team lost because of you. You came to say that. It's been. Ten years. <sighs> I thought you'd be crying. Who? Me? You cried. Wait, wait! Uh, don't go out on me! Nah, nah! Just hold on. I'll get more wood. Ha! 
Give me a break! Alright, tough guy. So he gave us a nice display of his um, agility and speed. But we should be able to handle him. <laughs> it's funny, for, for the movie version that I recorded, I actually died on this boss for, I think, probably the first time ever. I don't think I ever remember dying against this boss. I made a I made a really bad misjudgment, and it cost me big time. So. What I will do is um, I will use an overdrive against this guy. So the way Titus' overdrives work, he has four overdrives in total, and the way to unlock more of them is by actually doing them. So the more you do Titus' overdrive, the more you'll unlock new ones. So I think I need to do this ten times in order to unlock the second one. On my side? Cool! Yeah. Okay, so we will be seeing a lot more of this young lady in this provocative suit. And I will quickly go ahead and say that this girl is 15. So, as a 22 year old, I shall be not be making any comments. And especially not the kind of comments I probably would have made as a 15 year old myself. So, yes, she is 15. And she has always caused a little bit of controversy in that sense. Um, might as well give him a potion, why not? Yeah, so what happened in my uh, in the, the playthrough that I did for the movie version, I underestimated when uh, this girl was going to come and help me out, so I thought it was going to, you know, fade to that cutscene and then she was going to come in, but I was too early. And this thing ended up killing me before I was ready, so... But as you can see, grenades are pretty effective for this early stage of the game. They seem to do a nice bit of damage. And because she has the ability to steal, you can always replenish and, uh, and get more. But the stealing mechanic is, I think, um, the chance is reduced by a factor of two every time. So the second time you have a half chance, then a quarter, eighth, etc. So that's why after the first successful steal, it's always going to be less and less likely that you'll be able to pull it off. And down it goes teamwork and the sphere level shall be explained that soon Phew. <laughs> that was close So that was the warm welcome of the Albed and their fantastical language, which must have been quite funny and probably difficult to voice act, actually, with all that jumbled up letters.
Kid, did die job. Hey, that hurts. Usujek, Rain. Whoa. Okay. Hey, nurse! Right, whatever. Do we hood kebeg? I said I don't understand. Fed! He said you can stay if you make yourself useful. You... you understand me? All right, I'll work. Okay, thanks for, you know, letting us get beaten up a little bit first before you actually decided to intervene. She's been trolling us the whole time. Okay, this little book here is an Albert Primer. And there's number one. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I've already... Yeah, and you have Albert ranks, which I'm not sure what they... what the point of them is, but there you go, they exist. So, only 25 more to go. I did the maths. Okay, I think Riku is going to explain something to me here, if I remember correctly. Oh, almost forgot. Okay. I'd prefer to just explain this myself. I can probably edit this out, actually. Okay, so let me give a little explanation of the sphere grid. This is basically how you increase the strength of your characters and teach them abilities. And what you already notice is that Tidus has a sphere grid. Well, they're all part of the same sphere grid. And uh, this mystery girl also has a place on the sphere grid. So it's not going to be too much of a stretch to assume that she shall become a playable character at some point. Right. So let's... Um, Obviously, by gaining XP, you gain sphere levels, and that enables you to move down your sphere grid. And by defeating monsters and other stuff, you'll be able to get spheres. And these spheres will help you activate the nodes that are present on your sphere grid. So, one of the things I like about the sphere grid system is that each player, well, each character has their own portion of the sphere grid. That if you play through the game naturally, you will reach. Because obviously, as you can see, there's level locks here that stop you from, like, for example, when I get here, I won't be able to head over here because getting level 3 locks takes a long time. So, you know, so I'll be forced to follow this path through. And Titus' sphere grid ends somewhere here. So this is the end of uh, Titus' natural sphere grid. And by the time you fill out all of these nodes that lead up to it, you will only have done a small portion of the, the whole sphere grid. But Titus will be a, a pretty specialized character. And that's nice because it allows each character to have their own special abilities. So Tylus is kind of, you know, he's agile, he's quick. He does a fair bit of damage and he has a few um, white magic abilities that will help out the team. So slow, haste, that kind of stuff. But a character that will appear later on, you know, some of them will be more strength based, some will be white magic, black magic. So it enables each character to have their own, you know, specific skill set. And once you complete the game, well, I personally, once I complete the game and I get onto side questing that's when you can you know unlock stuff and you can make Tylus a black mage if you so wish and eventually you will be pretty much completing this entire thing so that will take a while but there are tricks that will help you to to do this and we'll discuss those in more detail once we get to the end of the game which will be quite a long way away okay I think that's all I need to say but yeah status obviously uh, the maximum is 255, so as you can see, there is a long way to go. 255 is like, you know, Dark Aeon levels. Once you get to 255, you'll be able to kill everything in the game. We found some ancient ruins right beneath us. It's not active now, but there should still be some power left. We're going to go down there and activate it. And then we should be able to salvage the big prize. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get to work. Roger. Having played the uh, Japanese version for the movie version that I did, what I can say is this, for the, for the voice acting, Riku actually sounds 
uh, a lot more childish. I mean, okay, she sounds you know young in this game as well, but the Japanese voice actress, you know, she actually properly sounds like a kid in that game. So I think that kind of suits her a little bit more. Oh, shit. Okay. So, where possible, I'll be stealing in order to um, stock up on grenades because there's a boss battle coming up in a little bit. And in order to get through it more quickly, it'd be nice to make use of grenades. Because these guys all have a grenade to steal. There we go, easy peasy. Uh, there are Tidus only challenges that people do, and you know, even at this stage, there are people that you know learn Tidus' final overdrive already. So you can imagine how much battling that's going to take in order to charge Tidus' overdrive. I think it's 90 times or 80 times that you need to use his overdrives. So yeah, there is a lot of crazy challenges to be done in this game, and it's arguable that I have done probably one of the most craziest. So if you check my channel, you can find out. I'm talking about. Um, I guess this is probably the first time I'm ever going to be playing through an RPG and that obviously means kind of repetitive battles. So eventually what I'll do is um, when I get to larger areas I'll be probably editing out uh, repetitive battles. So if we get the same set of enemies you know, three or four times through an area I'll probably talk about them once and then you know, just head through so you don't have to keep listening to me say stuff or whatever. But if you prefer that I kept every single battle in, then you know, feel free. I don't mind. But I'll just I probably just won't have too much to say, I'll just be, you know, doing the mouse. Okay, so it already has some, some power to it. Now, watch uh, Titus's expert IT skills. That, kids, is how you get rid of the blue screen of death on your PC. I'd recommend you to try it next time. Work for Titus, it probably works for you. So what I could do here is, um, oh there's only two, okay. I could chuck a grenade and probably kill them all here, but might as well steal a few more. But yeah, I just need to keep track of HP, especially Riku, because she does have so little HP. Oh shit, I forgot which one I stole from, I think it was that one. Riku has so little HP, even against, you know, very simple enemies she can. She can sometimes get herself into danger. Okay, I have a fair few grenades now. How many do I have? Eight. Okay, that's that's more than enough. Die, bitches! And obviously, each enemy in the game has uh, has an overkill number where if you do that specific amount of damage or more, you'll get an overkill, and I think that gives you 1.5 times the AP you would have got. And I think it can give you more items as well. I think it doubles your items, if I'm not mistaken. And there is our next boss, lying in wait. I might as well just, um, instead of, so I don't waste time during the battle, so I might as well just heal him up here. So we can just launch an all-out assault straight away and take him down. Is 
so yeah, normally you probably wouldn't have too many grenades at this stage, but obviously I prepared a little bit so I don't have to spend too much time stealing, wasting turns. Uh, if you do a certain amount of damage, this guy's going to run away and he's going to have a, a fairly decent attack. Yeah, so in certain battles you get to to do special things, like standing by. So if you stand by, I think um, the HP goes up by 50. But if I just press triangle to defend, it will reduce the damage by half. So I might as well just do that. So yeah, I'll be reducing the physical damage here instead. Come on. I guess I might as well explain a little bit about what I know about the, the turn-based system. So what you see uh, on the right here with the the icons of the players that obviously shows you the turns but uh, each move that you do in the game has a has a basically a rank and what that means is it's effectively how quick the move is so if you notice Riku here she's gonna get that turn but if I move down to item she gets her next turn more quickly because using an item is a quicker move um, uses a quicker move as well but as the game goes on you learn kind of uh, big abilities you know like spells and moves and that kind of stuff some of them will cause a greater delay. So overdrive, for example, that would delay your turn because it's you know, an important thing that you're doing. So obviously, as time goes on, you'll get more used to these. And if you want more in-depth information about you know, um, attack ranks and uh, click tick speeds and that kind of stuff, that's kind of much more technical stuff that most players do not need to know. There's uh, FAQs out there that you can uh, read and research. But for all intents and purposes, all you need to know is that there are certain moves that can bring your, your second turn much more quickly. I think after he's done this twice, the third time you get the option to do a pincer attack instead. So. Alright, the first uh, ability Titus learned was Cheer, and this is an ability that increases your physical attributes, so your attack and defense. And I believe I always get this wrong, and I'll probably have to add an annotation. So you can use cheer up to five times, and by the fifth time, it actually makes quite a bit of difference. And it's likely that I'll probably be using it for the most difficult boss in the entire game. So you'll be seeing cheer at some point. I don't use it too much because it just wastes turns, but there you go. Very easy boss again. As you can see, uh, question mark has a hell of a lot of AP to go until next sphere level. I guess that's already a slight clue, but I'm not going to say anything. That's the way out. And we're pretty much done for this uh, section. One thing I forgot to mention, before you jump into the water, there's one of those owl bed. And uh, if you ask him, uh, if you talk to him, he gives you a potion. And what you can do is jump into the water and jump back out, and it's kind of like a thing where you can repeatedly get potions from him. So, yeah, you can feel free to do that if you wish. Okay, so keep an eye on the thing that um, we're helping to recover here, because you'll be seeing it later on in the game.
putra irshim. Trada nukt fana neka. Huf, ruftu, tungadib. Wee, wicheta. Hey, hey, I helped out, didn't I? Ugh, hungry. Whoa! Right on. Hey! It's because you eat too fast. Uh huh. Huh. <laughs> hey! Hello there. What is your name? Riku. Whoa! You really do understand. Why didn't you say so earlier? I didn't get a chance to. Everyone thought we were a fiend. Uh, we? Oh, we means you. Um... <sighs> Who are you guys, anyway? We're out bed. Can't you tell? Wait, you're not an Albed hater, are you? I don't even know what an Albed is. Where are you from? Xanarkand. I'm a Blitzball player. Uh, star player of the Xanarkand Abes. Did you hit your head or something? Um, you guys hit me? Oh, right. Do you remember anything before that? So I told her everything there was to tell about Xanarkin. About life there, Blitzball, and Sin's attack. And about how Aaron and I were engulfed in this light. I just said things as they came to mind. But then I started to wonder. Did I say something funny? You were near Sin. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. You'll be better in no time. They say your head gets funny when Sin is near. Maybe you just had some kind of dream? You mean I'm sick? Because of Sin's toxin, yeah. You sure? Yeah. There is no Xanarkand anymore. Sin destroyed it a thousand years ago. So, no one plays Blitzball there. Huh? What? Wh what do you mean, a thousand years ago? But I saw Sin attack Xanarkin. You're saying that happened a thousand years ago? No way! Well, so there's the, the first major bombshell. So it appears that we've been sent forward a thousand years in time. And one of the only parallels that we have with the world of Xanarkand is Sin. So, very interesting stuff. And I think I'll end the session here, and uh, we'll continue from here next time.